Hey babes, welcome to the Happiness Heals channel. My name is Tiffany. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back friends. Today we're doing a tutorial in my Live Rich Planner as I walk through some ideas for how to put together your monthly calendar spreads in this planner. I'm going to be flipping back through my 2021 Live Rich Planner to show you ways in which my planning style for the monthly calendar has evolved and changed over the year. <laughs> so let's get started. I'm going to start with my most current planner spread for the month of June 2021 and this just gives you an idea of kind of where my planning style is now for my monthly spreads using this planner. I have personalized it and customized it over time to better suit my needs and there are quite a few things that I do to make sure that it works well for me. The first thing being, I always make sure that I insert my date dots, insert my weeks. I like to start with the Monday and start end with the Sunday because I like my weekend days together. But really, you can customize this planner however you like to best suit your needs. Some of the things that you will note that I have here is a lot of color coding. I always create a monthly calendar key and I use color coding to show me kind of the different categories of what's going on. And I can visually see more of what is happening, whether that's things for myself, things for my daughter, things for reminders, all of that. And I try to capture a lot of different things here because for me, this is like my catch-all planner. So I include special days holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, any special days. I try to note in my planner in a particular color, things for my daughter, things for our dog, things for myself, reminders. For instance, the Live Rich Planner launch day, just because I wanted to remember when I should start looking out for my new planner. Sales and promotions, yes, I keep track of things like that. For instance, Amazon Prime Day was this June, and I wanted to be sure that I had funds in place to be able to take advantage of some of those deals. Bath and Body Works so anything that I normally like to spend or adjust my budget for, I like to track on this planner. This is not necessarily the planner I use for budgeting, but it just helps me in terms of remembering those things so I can add them into my budget by paycheck workbook. The other thing I have here are travel days. I'm not traveling particularly this month, but I do have it here in the event that something comes up. TV show premieres. Yes, I do like to watch certain TV shows and know when they're going to relaunch for a particular period. So I normally have a category for that. And then miscellaneous is more like a catch-all. So I'll put packages that I know are arriving or other little things that I need to be reminded of in my planner under the miscellaneous category. And then the bottom section I've actually customized for online orders. I do a lot of online purchases and sometimes I honestly forget <laughs> that I've purchased certain things. So I'm trying to remember now to add those things onto my planner page so that I can kind of track when I ordered them. And then I'll note under miscellaneous when the packages actually arrive. I do use the monthly project section. I have several things going on in terms of furnishing my apartment right now. So I have a lot of that covered there. I've also personalized this. This used to be a personal focus this month and then work focus this month. Those are the provided prompts within the planner, but I've actually changed it to better suit my needs for household and personal. Here in the let's get creative section, I use this for various purposes. Most recently, it has just been a great place to keep future appointments and things that I need to put in future monthly spreads. So that's what I've been using that for lately. I will start going back in my planner though, so you can see kind of how I've evolved to this point now. And then just for awareness as well, I have kept the goals this month section because I think it is good to be working towards something each month. So I do try to set at least about four or five different goals to have each month. And as I said, color coding, I would recommend as a very good good tool for being able to visually track, monitor, and assess the things that you're doing each month towards your goals, towards, you know, all the different categories of things that you want to keep organized in your life. July 
of 2020, which is when I first started using this planner. As you can see, I was already using a calendar key at that time, similar to how she recommends for the Budget by Paycheck workbook to help me organize things. I always try to have a calendar key section. As I mentioned, goals for the month, and then I actually was uh, trying to use the monthly win section. Over time, I learned it's kind of harder to go back after the fact and then write those things in. So that is why that section has evolved for me over the over the year. Also monthly projects. And as you can see, I really wasn't using this Let's Be Creative section as much. And I felt that my planner spreads, honestly, at that time, I was just getting used to how I was going to use this planner and for what purposes. So I didn't do a lot of stickers. I didn't do a lot of extra illustrations. I wanted to just kind of keep it simple. But as you can see, that has <laughs> changed over time as well. I kept the original prompts at that point, personal and work. That is the way I started using this planner. Then getting to August, as you can see, I did not use my goal section. I did have my calendar key and I was trying to track a lot of things in my planner. I did have my sales, reminders, travel days, all those things were still being tracked in this planner for me as well as monthly projects. This was the period when my daughter was transitioning to college. So I was very busy in this planner. I really didn't have a lot of time to really go into detail with this planner. So as you can see, it's still outside of the color coding. It's still very plain compared to some of my other spreads. September, same thing. Really wasn't using goals. They did have my calendar key and monthly wins. And I started trying to use more of the Budget Mom stickers, though I have to admit they were not my full aesthetic. But I do use them when I can and when it makes sense in my planner. So I was starting to play around with just using stickers for decor in my planner at that time. I still wasn't using a lot of my sections just because I was very busy with transitioning things for my daughter and a lot of other things that were going on in my life at the time. I did not actually actually do monthly calendars in October, November, or December. My life was just very busy, a lot of transitions during that period. So I picked back up in January. I wanted a fresh start and a new way of doing things. So this is where I started making sure to do my goals, beefing up my calendar key, as well as going back to do my monthly wins. And actually here is really not about monthly wins. It was just reminders about those sales, as I mentioned, things throughout the year that I know I normally like to participate in and wanted to try to mark those in my planner somewhere. So I put that there. I just had a lot of different things kind of going on at the time. It was still during COVID, so a lot of things got canceled but at least I had them here to go back and track. I did not do a spread for February, March, April, <laughs> or May. It's been a very busy year. So I did pick back up in June with the spread that I showed you. And as I mentioned now, I've taken color coding to the next level. I've taken decorating to the next level. And I'm really trying to fill in the other sections as well to make sure that I'm using my planner more purposefully. And I think I've learned a lot more about my planning style and how to better use this planner for myself. And I hope that some of these things will give you some ideas about how to customize this page. You can start with whatever weekly layout works best for your schedule. You can customize the different prompted sections to better suit your needs. As you can see, I put little box stickers here to cover up the pre-prompts as needed and create sections that work better for me. That is really how I want to transition going into the new 2021 Live Rich Planner. And I've actually set up my July calendar for that planner. So I'm going to pull that out and just show you how my style has evolved even more now going into the new year. And this is my July calendar view for the 2021. 2021 year. I do actually really seriously plan to do every single month this time around to get the full use out of my planner. Now that I know kind of what better works for me. I've started using the dot markers to kind of help me with color coding. I like that they just look a little cleaner on the page. I won't use them all the time. I still may refer back to other ways that I've used the color coding in the past, but it's just made it look a little more simpler. I've also continued to use my goals, continue to keep a monthly key, as well as keeping the online order section. I do have some monthly projects that I plan to fill in for this month. And as you can see, I'm still using 
using that let's get creative section for keeping track of upcoming appointments so I don't forget about them. In terms of my focuses this month, I really hope that with the next edition of the Budget Moms Planner, she makes this a little more open-ended for use as well because it better suits me to have a household and personal versus personal and work, which I think is the provided prompt for the these two goals. I do think you should always have a focus, but once again, that may vary for each person. Ideas for how to use this planner. I hope I've been a little bit helpful in terms of that. Like I said, customize, customize, customize. Make sure that your monthly spread works for you. Make sure you're capturing things that work and suit your life and make things more organized for you. Color coding is a great tool for that. Having some kind of key or reminder about the ways that you're organizing your thoughts or where things belong in your planner is a good idea. If you don't want to take up a full section on the side, you can always do them across the top or even down here in that let's get creative section. I hope this is helpful information and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you'll be informed the very next time we have something to share on the Happiness Heals channel. Take care, friends.